I have a question for y'all. Okay. okay, like, can you marry someone like outside of like Christian, no. like personally? So the answer. And why not? The answer, and why? And why? To answer your question. Well, I can't say no. I can't. But to answer your question, can you? Yes. The Bible says, "Do not be unequally yoked." Yeah. You can be married to a Christian and still not be wow. equally yoked. Yeah. Right? Because if you, I'm a Christian, and you a Christian, but you like kind of lukewarm or like you, yeah. you're not really on the same. I'm not gonna say level, but, you're not but if pursuing, you're not pursuing Christ like the way I'm pursuing, I'm pursuing right. we're not equally yoked. And so, for those that don't know what that means, yoked, a yoke is this basically this harness that you put two oxen on, two cattle or livestock. And so, if you have a big cattle on one side, and you have another one that's small on the other. They're gonna be going in circles because the one is so strong, and the other one you're gonna be dragging the other one. And so, um, you're not gonna have—I don't even want to say you're not gonna have a good life because there's people that do that that have a good life, great marriages, but you're not gonna be in God's fulfilling God's will for you the way that you could be. So you can, but it's not ideal, and anything less than that will be settling for less than God's plan. And then with that, like you just said, to further that, you wouldn't be fulfilled. You'd never actually truly, you'd never truly actually be fulfilled. And you? I would say you can, you can. if you want to. But, but like, could you personally, though? I'd be willing to if she's willing to eventually follow Christ. You know, because there's some people like that, they really just never followed any religion at all. Or because they were never aware, right? And if you know when exactly that I'm following Christ and saying, hey, look, you're willing to learn, you're willing to actually go to church, actually learn about God, then I will be willing to entertain it because you are open. But if you said no, like I don't I don't believe in Christ like or religion in general, then I would have to say no, because it's going to cause division, you know, yeah. especially when it comes to like if you're raising kids, it's like, hey, do we take them to church or no? Do we take them to two different churches? And I think when you have that conflict, it just brings tension. And so. And like we talked about earlier, like we need boundaries, right? And we need some type of commonality and common visions, right? And how we see our family, how we see our finances, how we see our religion. And so there needs to be some common grounds for us to really move in the direction or else it's going to be a battle, you know? And so to me, I'm open as long as you are willing to follow Christ eventually. Mm-hmm. And if it's a hard no, then it's definitely a hard no. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, for I, me. I got you. I mean, got you. <laughs> what about yeah. you? Uh, me personally, probably not. Um, just because... Like, in college, I tried it before. It just didn't work out. We were just, like, I felt like we were very, like, compatible, but we just had different uh, values. So, you know, good. calls. Yeah, that, too. Yeah. to so go. It just called, like, tension. So, yeah. Yeah, that tension is, like, kind of what Baruch was saying. Like, a house divided cannot stand. Right, so, exactly. <laughs> you got two different things. So, for me, personally, I could not. Like, I could where I, I know where I'm going, and so it's, like, I can't marry an unbeliever, but I also am not willing to marry a believer that's not pursuing Christ the same way that I am. Um, Because you're a hindrance at that point. And I believe that God, um, God cares about my desires enough to place somebody on this earth. It's seven point something billion people to place somebody on this earth that I, where I won't have to compromise in the area of faith. Of course, you, with marriage, you're going to have to compromise here, there, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But in the area of faith, that's one of those um, non-negotiables. Yeah, thank you. That's the word I was, I couldn't <laughs> find it. I was about to say uncompromisable. <laughs> <laughs> same thing, same yeah, thing. But non-negotiables, yeah, that's, that's, good, that's it. Good. Oh, yeah, also, do you feel like it's easier or harder to date as a Christian? Based on like your own like past experiences, <laughs> you know, and start with you, Easier okay? Or harder. <laughs> start with you, ladies first, of course. Start with me. Start with oh, you, of course. Jesus. Ladies first, harder? ladies first. Is it harder, or do you feel like it's easier? Um, you, know what you, you know, I mean, like you know what you want. I guess you can say. Here's the thing. It's I can't say it's harder. I think I would have to say. It's just challenging in different ways Um, because not being saved, the challenge is if I'm not saved at all, then I'm not in communication with the Holy Spirit. And if I'm dating someone who's not saved at all, then they're not in communication with the Holy Spirit, which means I don't have 
a dependable source of insight for what I need to be doing in that relationship. Mm-hmm. And so that, that makes it hard because in the world you deal with things such as infidelity. You deal with things where you have to base your trust on solely the history you have with that person rather than just in God. And so that, that, that makes it very hard, um, and, you know, being in the world. But the hard thing about being a believer in God is whenever I became a believer, I remember there was this automatic pressure that was put on me as a woman of Christ to be married. And then after that, it became, (laughs) you know, I started dating or whatever. And what became hard was not falling into lust. I said, well, now I can't have sex. How are we going to do this? (laughs) (laughs) You know, and that, I mean, it's not easy, but that's why it's challenging in different ways. Because with God, at least you have the Holy Spirit. So you have communication with him to know, you know, what you need to be doing. You have, you, you'll have the discernment at this point. You know, um, he'll lead you and guide you. And then he'll also reveal things to you that you would not have had revealed to you if you didn't have him. You know, you, he, you will have a gut, you know, that gut feeling. Whenever you're saved, typically that gut feeling is Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, um, Typically that, that random Passover just thought that comes and it's, re, it's real quiet. Typically that's Holy Spirit telling you so-and-so ain't doing right or you need to go ahead and dead that with so-and-so, you know. Um, so it's just challenging in different ways, um, but it's more rewarding being saved because when you're saved, you know God ain't going to have you in a mess. You know, whenever you're actually acknowledging him and everything you're doing, you know that he's going to lead you to the correct place because that's a promise. It's a promise in the Bible. It's an if then statement that says, acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your path. That's it's, it's scripture, you know. And so because of that. It's more rewarding. It's just you, you, you don't have a choice but to be fulfilled whenever you acknowledge him and everything you're doing. So, yeah. Oh, me. <laughs> I would say it's dependent on the person, whether you're Christian or whether you believe in any other religion. I think it really is contingent on the person, whether it's going to be easy or not, you know, because if I think it's all about common grounds, like for me, it is, you know, because I've dated someone before we learned about Christ. I dated the same person and after they learned Christ, you know, and so I've seen both sides with the same person, you know, so and I think it's. At the end of the day, it's like, is there grace from both sides? You know, I think when people are more from the Christian side and you're dating another Christian, it's like we have this high standard, right? It's like, it's almost like we start going back to that works thing where we're not supposed to do this, you know, we're not supposed to do this until marriage and it almost becomes unnecessary pressure, right? And we forget that we need to give each other grace at the end of the day. Like, and so that's why I said, if, if the person that you're with understands that, then it will be a smooth transition. It's kind of like, okay, we're not, we're not gonna have sex, right? And it's just like common understanding or we're not going to go out or are you is there are we going to go to church together? It's just there's certain things that you don't even have to like debate about because it's just a common understanding. But if you do mess up, do you also give grace? You know, because some Christians don't, you know, it's like, nope, you did it wrong and that's it. And it's like God, he talks about grace as much as standard, you know, and sometimes we're so focused on the standard and we are on grace. And to me, that's just unfortunate. That's good. But yeah, that's my thought. Yeah. Yeah, I think to answer that question, to me, that question is the same thing as asking, is it harder to be a Christian versus not? Um, Because you could really apply that same question to any area of living in Christian life. Like, is it harder to be a student as a Christian than not? Like, because take, for example, just cheating on the test. If I don't believe in God, what reason do I have really to not cheat? Because y'all told me not to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, cool. Um, I can't. That's good. But <laughs> different morals. <laughs> it's a different level of morals. Yeah, like, like got like, see I'm me. I'm trying to imagine my life as a non-believer. I would probably be pretty reckless, to be real, because I, what, what standard would I have to live by? Just the, everybody else doing stuff. Everybody else cheating, lying, doing stuff. I, at that point, I would be like, why wouldn't I? You know what I'm saying? But it is because I do um, believe in God and I do believe that we are called to a higher standard um, that I that I do want to uphold that. I don't want to disappoint God. I don't want to sin. I don't want to be in sin. Um, so to answer the question with the, with the dating thing, 
I don't think it's any harder. I think it just has, it comes with different things that you have to deal with, different, really what they both said, different standards, different uh, parameters, perimeters that you have to set, and, and boundaries. So I don't think it's any harder, though. Okay. How about you, Jordan? How about you? Um, and this is something that I'm working on. I think comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. So, like, my dating experiences have not been easy, and... For a while, I didn't even care about, like, the values part. Well, I care about them now. But, like, in the beginning, I felt like when I started dating people in college, I was like, are they cute? Uh, are they check. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Athlete, check. Check. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, you know, after being hurt and everything, I'm like, Hello. well, dang. Okay, well, something's got to give. Hello? <laughs> Let me, like, put these values in place and standards. Right. Are they equally yoked to me? Like, I've had that conversation a lot with my mom and my friends. And now, even looking at it, like, I have friends that are non-believers, and they just, like, it just seems so easy. But now, mm. I think it's, if I compare my experience to theirs, like, that's when I'm getting upset and all of that stuff. But if I'm just... Like living life every day and just having that trust and faith that God is going to bring the right person with the right standards and everything in my life at the right time, then I think I kind of enjoy my experience. Like I'm 23. Like I don't need to have any pressure and all of my needs are provided for by God. And I have a lot of the, my wants too. So, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to find satisfaction and joy in the other areas of my life and not think about, you know, Okay, if I don't have a boyfriend, like... It's not the end of the world. It's not like. the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, if I don't have somebody on Valentine's right. Day to post, like, it's not... I'm not going to die. Yeah. <laughs> right, Because right. I have satisfaction in other areas of my life. So, do I compare myself? I'm trying not to. But, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's... I'm satisfied in other areas. I don't know if that even answered your question. That might have been a tangent. <laughs> you know I go on tangents, so... <laughs> Yep, just but. scream as loud as possible. <laughs> What's happening? Yep, yep. What's going on? Yeah. 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 Yeah Believe in Christ, I feel like I know what I want and like what I'm uh, trying to find. So, but like, I feel like if I didn't experience that, I probably would think it's harder though, if that makes sense. But but like because I did experience it, like I kind of know. Okay, it's not as hard as I thought it was, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's real. <laughs> <laughs>